You mentioned Elon Musk. Yeah. I have to ask, man. Not many people have done a project for Elon Musk and the team at SpaceX. Um, tell me a little bit about, about that story. I mean, there's not a huge amount to say, I, I, I should say. It, it, it was a project um, working again with um, Lauren. It was that dress that changed color according to air quality, uh, to, not air quality, that, that was another project that we did, uh, according to, to, to data, to your, to your mind. Yeah. The original iteration of that went into the Barbican. Okay. And it wasn't about scanning data from the mind. Just looking for data, couldn't under, yeah, just, just looking for any source of uh, data. And um, Elon had data. He had mm. data. I, I presume that I'm trying to remember back now. I, th I think it was this Starlink, uh, you know, satellites, yes. uh, tracking satellites. And they also had sensors going out into space and they were measuring sort of solar flares and radiation storms and okay. whatever, other space weather, shall we say. And um, we, we were having a conversation around what kind of data should we get. One of the team said, oh, by the way, Elon Musk just saw an article that said he had this kind of data. And, and we said, well, let's get one of the interns to contact them. You know, over a game of poker. We were playing okay. poker. You know, we used to play a lot of poker in the studio to get people working together. And they gave it to you, the data? And, and we had a phone call. Yeah, Blimey. we had yeah. a phone call. Yeah. And um, we sort of, you know, from his, his, his office, he was interested. He'd seen it. And... Um, yeah, so, so that's what drove that uh, data. We had a very limited amount of um, data. So, yeah, I mean, he was uh, extraordinary. Uh, one of the things I thought was really interesting about him is um, he was, uh, yeah, he, he, there was an end of a meeting and he was talking about, I don't know what he's talking about. It was some science thing. And there's a lot of people there that were clearly very smart scientists. Yes. And it was one of those meetings where he was obviously pressing back on what they were saying or challenging in a, in a good way. I didn't see any sort of maliciousness. And they were saying, well, the reason, okay, well, the reason is this. And he was saying, yeah, but fair enough, but, but why this? And, he's, and then they would say, well, because of that. And he would say, well, well why that? And he, they, so he kept pushing back and challenging like their premise. Yes. And in the end, he'd worked it all the way back to kind of like, there's no more to say. Okay. And then he said, right, now let's rebuild it in a different way. First principles. What if we do it in a different way? Yeah. And yeah. I... I I hear it, it was amazing to watch. It yeah. was and you have yeah. to have that charisma to kind, of, to kind of do it. But it reminded me a little bit of uh, a project that we did around dementia, where we were working with a, uh, an amazing scientist called um, uh, Dr. Kate Story, who was one of the leading scientists in this space of dementia. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she had just done was that she had imaged a process in the brainstem, um, which, which was basically... Um, so basically, in the, uh, this is quite simplified, but deliberately quite simplified. So in the brainstem, the brain cells have to disconnect. They drift away. And by drifting away, they can kind of um, re-emerge. They can, they can sort of, by that, that notion of disconnecting and decompressing means that they can heal and then they reattach healed. And if they don't detach, well, that's what causes dementia. Mm. They don't heal. They, don't, they have to de deconnect, disconnect to kind of heal. And talking to her about this project, all of her life work came out, everything, all of the research, all of the seminars, all of the awards. Yeah. You know, she, she couldn't explain it in a, in a simple, cogent sure. way. Sure. She had to explain it in the way that mattered to her, which was this, this huge, in, in, encompassing, all enveloping sort of theory. So our job was to kind of simplify that. And that's what Elon Musk did. He, he, he took, you know, what would have been probably cumulatively 400 years of scientific experience and, and just gently pushed it back to the beginning and then rebuilt it in a slightly different way. With SpaceX, Elon Musk has done incredible things in aviation, I suppose. Before you were in business, you had a career in flying. As I well. did. Well, I was, I, yeah, well, I almost had a career in flying. So yeah, yeah. I, I was rather bizarrely was um, sort of very keen to fly airplanes. Yes. Well, no, not very bizarrely, because that, that bit was not bizarre. I, I still I will go back to flying airplanes at some point. Um, the only way as a, as a kid I could fly airplanes was by joining the Air Force. So yeah. Yeah, a flying scholarship. I was in university air squadron at university and did a lot of flying. And then in the end, it, I, I think it was clear that as I was getting older and you know, going through university and trying to work out who Jonathan was, yes. actually, I wasn't right for the Air Force. And I think the Air Force probably realised that I wasn't right for them either. Sure. But I still retained that kind of love of um, flying. But yeah, th so I'm on, I'm on basically my third career. Yes. You know, a bit of flying, a bit of luxury, a bit of innovation. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how I got from the Air Force into luxury. I, I, I feel really awful because quite often I'll get students at universities coming up saying, you know, the brands that you talked about, you know, those are the kind of brands that I aspire to work for. How, how did you get into luxury? And, and unfortunately, the answer is I 
almost literally just fell into an office kind of, you know, and said, right, well, I'll work here and work my way up. Well, you mentioned Steve Jobs. He famously once said, it's really hard to connect those dots looking forward. You have to kind of look yeah. backwards and that's kind of what you're doing there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do meet um, students that have got this absolutely rigid plan. It goes back to what I was saying about bending and being kind of flexible. So, um, you know, they will do this and they will then get that job and that will get them to there and yeah. they'll sort of you know, become the new sort of creative director of Galliano or whatever. So, um, and, and, and all it's very difficult to, to talk to them in a way that, that is realistic without sort of, demotivating them 